Hello there friends and welcome to the back office. Let's brush aside these tedious projects to work on something a little bit more fun. So I have here a clone Nintendo Pro Controller and I've been all about repairing the controllers at the moment and I've got a, a, a particular interest in repairing this one because I actually want to play Metroid Dread and there's an issue with it and I'll show you the issue before we continue. This one clicks this one doesn't and not only does it not click it actually binds up so that is unacceptable so we need to figure out how to get in here and i'll just start unscrewing the visible screws now i have repaired another controller in between this video and the last controller video and that's an xbox one controller and that was a repair of this d-pad here and it was very interesting because actually you had to cut um, the old foil the tape that's holding the switch contact and actually clean the underside of the switch oh no lost screws we'll find that one later and um and then actually recreate it like sort of clean it under under the underneath and then use kynar tape to actually repair that now that's quite cute isn't it look at the way that's actually a pretty thick unbendable unyielding piece of plastic that would be fun to 3d print some of those in the future but uh, I'll put that aside and I, you can see I'm still searching for that screw but it's, it's fine don't worry about it you can do that off camera that's fine so this seems to be two halves and they were very much held together by those nubbins that we just removed but I feel there will be spludging there will be spludging ahead Oh, two more screw. Don't splodge it yet. <laughs> now, what was weird, in the old uh, Xbox controllers, I did use a spludger, but I discovered actually that if I just grip those ones and put my nails behind it, crah, I could rip those hand grips off in a far better way. So perhaps uh, the spludger was unnecessary part of the kit. And just to show you, I do have other Xbox kits, and this is the kit for the controller potentiometers there's two in the kit and these are the battery doors because apparently whenever you buy uh, second-hand ones people have bought these crazy rechargeable batteries from Argos uh, and lost the original battery doors and you don't they never come with the charger so that's handy just to be, we have to revert them back to AA usage Although I did have some success by ripping apart one of those, I think it was a Venom brand, oh there's two more screws, Venom brand battery, uh, rechargeable battery system by just literally ripping out the NICAD cells and just clipping a bit of the plastic so you could just get the AAs in. That did work. Okay, all the screws, he said, see appear to be out, at least all the visible screws. Ah, okay, so the back is off. That's a nice clear little shell, isn't it? That's very cute on that side. And that is actually quite a good battery. I mean, considering these are an aftermarket controller, it has got some quite nice parts. I do spot a, at least one more screw, in fact, probably three. So I'm just gonna keep going. There's a lot of screws in this. Now I do remember these came out a fair while ago and they were obviously significantly cheaper than the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. There was an issue because Nintendo updated the Bluetooth stack on the switch and it seemed to just break this I couldn't get it to pair for love nor money however I did try again today and it did work so I guess good on Nintendo that you know they actually repaired this thing to allow people's unlicensed hardware to work and they don't have to do that and that's a kind of nice segue into another thing I've been working on you can see these pile of boards here I'm working on a new uh, module for work effectively and it uses an FTDI 232R chip and you can see I've got loads of them here because I, I, I just couldn't get it to work and eventually I did find an original of one of my very own uh, boards and I can show you that it's kind of cool it's here this is the precursor to what we eventually had as the ultimate joystick and I pulled its FTDI chip off here so I know it was an original one because it actually programs, whereas those ones don't. However, the thing still failed, so I'm, I'm kind of quite distressed about that. So if there are any, any experts on FTDI 232RL, which I thought I was, to be honest with you. I've, I've hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of boards out there using it, but apparently I'm not as clever as I thought. Who would like to help me debug something? Please get in touch. Right, so that is very fascinating. Look at that, that's actually 
amazing quality, isn't it? I didn't expect that at all. So you actually have a front PCB here and a back PCB and a little ribbon. So I'm going to just dink that up with my fingernail so I can get that off. This is alarmingly well made. And I guess if you think of all of the functions these things have, they are almost like completely independent computers themselves. But what's fascinating about this one, look, it's got this extra hardware here. So there's uh, a space for a timing crystal, another probably microcontroller, with diodes, resistors, capacitors, uh, you can see there. There's your antenna, which is probably, I don't think it's Bluetooth, maybe it is, or yeah, it is Bluetooth. Um, and if I'm not mistaken on these, if you plug them into a PC, you'll actually be able to just run them as normal joysticks, so you can use them on other things. It's a bit like the same way that if you put a Xbox controller on your PC, it does actually just mount as a normal one. And I can see the issue right away here when the camera eventually decides to join us in focusing. You can see when I push down, it's not working because that bar that pushes the micro switch is actually broken. Now, I do have some of these where I've ripped them out of things, but let's see if the one in the old Xbox kit might fit. Because I think it's worth salvaging this joystick, I really do. Um, I did find the uh, other pad I had bought, also my kids have destroyed it in a more annoying way, where they've actually ripped out one of these buttons and lost that, lost it. So 3D printing one of those is probably less of a, a viable solution because you can richly replace it for £19. So, I'm umming and ahhing about that one. I, I think I know that you guys at home would be saying, yeah, you should be modelling and 3D printing that part. But there is a sort of diminishing return sometimes, isn't there? Now, I did notice when I was looking up these joysticks that the PlayStation, Xbox, everything seems to use pretty much the same modules and that looks alarmingly close. So I think we will continue the discombobulation unless, hang on, let me have a quick look. Yeah, now this isn't something that can actually be repaired <laughs> without just taking that out. But that does explain why it is a little bit crunchy and a little bit nasty. So the aim of the game is to remove as little as possible to just get this PC bill tilted over. Do I call it a PC bill? Yeah. Uh, tilted over enough so that I can get into it. I think I'm gonna have to remove this back panel because the USB-C is poking out through there. Now I was speaking to Electron Ash while I was having my FTDI woes and he shared with me some really interesting insights on USB-C and I think now I'm going to be removing USB minis or micros rather or either from my projects in lieu of uh, using a USB-C because uh, they're much simpler to wire up than I previously appreciated. Now there is a screw here but it's not actually into this PCB I think this LED light pipe is still holding that board in, so we'll get that right out there. But it's definitely loose. Let's see what we can lift. There we go. And that's a cute little piece there. Look, just a little light pipe takes those LEDs and then shines them out the bottom to tell you what, I guess, what controller number, what channel number you're on. We must be getting there. In fact, it is starting to wobble. It's a weeblin and a wobblin. My, my this main issue is still this USB-C, so I guess you probably have to lift the bottom up and then slide it this way. But there is another component in there, which is interesting, which is that bit there that's actually screwed down, which I suspect might be another antenna. So let's see if I can have a little look-see. Mm, it might be. Or is it just the battery contacts? Let's take this vibrator motor out because that seems to be snagging it. Yes, there we go. Yeah, that's the battery PCB. So everything we need is on here. And look how wonderful it is. They've actually completely labeled that up. So let's just have a quick look while we're here. So you've got your spy clock, your spy miso, your spy mosi, your SCL. So you've got I squared C, SDA here. So you've got your I squared C bus here and your spy bus here. So you could intercept that. You've got what appears to be a JTAG type interface. You've got your three volt supply, up, down, left, right. Uh, left, down, right, 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 right. Everything, NFC. NFC. So it even has the NFC on it. Interesting. Cool. So you can play Breath of the Wild. 
That's absolutely fascinating. So if you want to actually adapt this for your own project, you know, make some other kind of mega joystick, you could just tap in here. Um, I was considering the other day, how would you make a joystick, you know, for one-handed use, if you had a physical handicap or something like that. And it, it sounds to me like a fun endeavor to try, you know, to help people with that. So that might be something we could try in the future. Now I'm just gonna get off camera my little bit of, let's just make sure we're doing the, ouch. <laughs> Don't hold your sword around by the tip. Um, where's the broken one? It was this one, wasn't it? Yes, it was this one. I almost feel I should check the other one there. Let's check the other one before we pack everything up. And there are a lot of solder contacts to undo. And I'll just zoom out just to show you. That was solder flux here. This is where I was keeping it. Pop it over there. It's a bit grunky, junky, junky, but it works well. I'm gonna zoom in and we're going to attempt to do this. The PCB is trying to hang off at a weird angle. We won't let that stop us. Sonk, nice. Pleased with that. Nice and clear first time, next go. Yes. And I'd like to thank Flame Lily for sending me this amazing sucker. I'm still using it and it was lovely to see you. I believe it was last weekend. Keep up the good work in the retro community. Now I am gonna do a little, I think I've gotta do a little video, just a recap video, because I had a thing on my phone that said, look at these pictures from way back when, like it does, you know, like it goes 10 years ago, five years ago, last year, last month, yesterday. And it just showed me loads of pictures from videos and little meetups and all sorts of stuff of all the types of project that we've done on this channel since time immemorial and I'll tell you what it blew my mind because there's such a variation we we're playing with retro computers 3d printing soldering kits um, streaming old video games I mean it's just endless and it's really funny because sometimes you think what what am I doing here why am I wasting my time making these videos that very few people watch but it does seem to become worth it because you kind of go, well, we do a lot of stuff and it's not, you're not doing the stuff to make videos. You're just doing the stuff because you do that sort of stuff. And the fact you're sharing it is just something, you know, it's a bit like documenting it. I was never good at documenting my projects and writing them up. And some people are, they have really good journals that they keep on, you know, restoring a jammer cab and all the steps and all the chips and stuff they've used. I'm not good at that. So making a video about it as I was just going along, um, I just found it useful as, a, as an aid memoir. Um, and yeah, like I was saying, I, I sort of digress a little bit, but basically that's what we've got here on this channel. It's just so random. And of course, YouTube doesn't really favor that kind of content, but that's not what we hear. And we tend to just talk about it in the Discord, which is what we want to do. Our own little community. So I'm just trying to put some pressure on these. Oh, don't break anything. These legs. Um, just checking. I'm guessing also this uh, pad here is the controller one, which y you use for running around, which is the one that probably takes the most abuse. So I'm wondering if what took it out, if it was Super Mario Odyssey or if it was Breath of the Wild, maybe Minecraft or a bit, <laughs> bit Terraria. So I'm just gonna put a bit more solder on here. Now I have hot air. We could consider blowing some hot air on this, but I, I want to just kind of investigate this pin by pin because sometimes you'll find that it's one being particularly tenacious. Um, nothing is jumping out just yet. I think this guy could be, I mean, they're looking pretty clear. I'll, I'll turn it over in a sec just to make sure there's no other mechanical means that these are held in. No. So we've got a couple of options here. Either we basically keep probing and, and yanking on it till something happens, or, which I think probably is the better way, we will destroy it further, and that will help us. Now, there you go, you see? Now this was really interesting because you can get some sort of repair parts for these, and you can actually just change the potentiometer innards, which are that piece there. 
And I did notice, note that on the uh, Xbox thing. So some people like, you bend them over, you change that inner part, and then you just push it all back up. But that has that benefit, of course, that we can now just work, look, see, just like that. Just work on that little three pin device on its own, rather than try to bring out the whole thing as a module. And you can see there, we've got two out of three pins not cooperating. And something you need to bear in mind, by the way, is uh, these pads are nice and big. The chances of you breaking them are the, the wires Oop! <laughs> are pretty slim. And you can see that popped straight out there, as well as this part. We'll figure out what that part is in a minute. But let's have a look there. Yeah, that is truly messed up. That's why I couldn't, I couldn't for love nor money get it to click at all. But now it's really, really wonk. So before we continue, I will just give it another quick clean. Interestingly as well about my camera here. So I'm using here, when I started making videos, I decided to buy myself what was the best camera at the time, according to a lot of people, which was the Panasonic GH4. And I absolutely loved it. It's a great camera, love it. it does 4K, lots of modes. It was the Mutz Nuts. And then when I set up this rig here, because I would touch all the lenses and buttons with my dirty flux coated fingers, I thought I can't use this nice camera. So I replaced it, well I didn't actually replace it, in addition to it I got a Panasonic GH3, which was also a very good camera. Uh, it doesn't do the 4K, but frankly, honestly, I've not ever seen the benefit of a 4K pipeline right now. It's a lot of crunching. Let's throw this in a bit. Um, so uh, the funny thing is the GH4 is sitting in the tripod and it sits there forever. It's never really out of the tripod, never used. And I don't do video t in front of the camera as much anymore. I just one, don't have the space and don't have the time. Maybe we'll change that. But it's just, I just thought it's ironical really that uh, that happens. And, uh, and uh, you're not getting the most value out of your incredibly expensive camera and you're getting uh, the most value out of your cheaper camera because I just sold the expensive one. Now I just poked that through and what's fascinating here, you actually have two sets of pins for this tack switch, uh, which is very fortunate because our one's fitted in this bottom pin, but yeah, you might well find one that fits in the other set of pins. And that motion seems great. If anything, the plastics on this look quite a bit thicker than the plastics on this. So you might get far more uh, use out of this one. But then the shaft is a bit narrow, actually. That one's a nice bigger shaft. So six of one, half a dozen of the other. So we'll bend that back in. I'm just giving it a bit of pressure because I'm not sure it's quite sitting as flush as it can. But honestly, it's looking at it, I don't think it's going to matter. Just make sure it's not like jarringly sticking out or cock angled. Let's get the old solderer going on it. So we're going to have a fair few solder points. I'm just going to solder this one first because this is the one where I felt it could do with some pressure if I was going to put pressure on it. So I'm going to put a little bit of pressure. Y you heard that. You heard it just jump. Yes, now it's sitting flat. That's what it needed. It needed that encouragement. Let's get in there and just wang, wang them all. Get that in there. And what would be probably better to do is do some opposites like that. And again, let's just do the pressure thing on this one. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. So that is fully seated. And then just work around. Once you've got the opposites in, you don't have to worry about any stresses on the board. Just get on with it. You'll be nice and quick. And I reckon that is a bloody good job done well. Now, if you're very hygienic with your soldering, it's probably a good time again just to give it a quick clean down. And if you're curious about the state of your other pair, uh, thumb no thumb knobber knobber, let's uh, let's just check that out and give it a little clean while we're here because we've got the old IPA. Again, rubbing the IPA there, give that get that flux off. But you might say, Andrew, you didn't add any additional flux. But remember, your flux is in the solder too. It's all a, a flux ed solder. In fact, I've not done a really good job of cleaning that, but I just don't care. No one's seeing it, apart from you guys at home. 
It's not going to get interfere. Right, and uh, what you can do is I've got some IPA on here, this brush. I'm just going to drop it in there. Just give it a little cranky crank. Nice. This is really firm, by the way. That one is, is way firmer than the other one. And that, that might be quite nice in the old game. Now I've just got to pop it back together. Now this thing that we discovered, I believe, is a button of sorts. And it's all part of this, this mechanism. So if I can figure that out. <laughs> I managed to locate where those bits go. There was a light pipe and the button there. I've also noticed I did accidentally disconnect the battery terminal. So I probably ought to just make a little black mark on the positive so that we know how to hook it back up. Whoops. And this thing's going to go in there. I believe this which way round. Please, just work. Yep. That's looking okay. And I'm hoping when the actual tack switch is in there, it gives it a bit of a click. I couldn't put it off anymore. I have basically everything else in. So I'm going to have to try to trim some of this off so we can use it. In fact, that worked really well. The old fingernail. Boom. Double trouble. Oh, he unplugged his soldering iron. Hang on. Gears a sec. Let's get that going. New tip, by the way. Look at that. Isn't it sparkly? Sparkly and beautiful. Right, 330 degrees. We're nearly there. So I'm just going to tin these first, which, of course, will probably expand or expose more of the wire as that insulation contracts but I'm not going to worry about that and rather than poke it through the holes I'm just going to surface solder these where's my old thing thing there it is let's get in there you will be soldered okay let's get this in there and I'm being very cautious because I don't want to mess with that edge connector just one kiss with the soldering iron and it could be all over. But that's going to do the job pretty much perfectly. And then all that matters is now to find all the pieces to get them back. So let's get the knob ends in. There was that little screw. I think that's the one that's going to ha harass me. And, and, oh, that clicks nice now. Two slightly different sounding clicks. I think I can live with that. And this was a real tricky one. You could see that they've had to make this kind of long to, to, to compensate for its difficulty. And they don't normally like giving you extra on anything. Oh, look, more, more uh, test points. ZR, R, COM, ZL, L. So yeah, more, more hacking opportunities for you. There are plenty of buttons on the front of these things. Now, interestingly, when you plug an Xbox controller into a PC, and go to device manager you can see all the buttons that all of the things are mapped to and they're really kind of mundane buttons and you kind of think well it's nice and simple isn't it there's not really nothing's really changed it's all got the bluetooths and the 2.4 gig stuff but it's still at the end of the day just a joystick now you probably can't see what's going on here but i'm just basically holding that thing in and then poking my finger in to shut the ribbon the ribbon uh, trap on it. I don't know what you call it. That that thing. Oh yes, that is feeling rather nice now. Much better. Yeah, just putting this together, and I am a bit worried because I do seem to have a number of screws mismatched, and not just the screws that we knew we lost from earlier. So we'll see how that pans out in a moment. We might have to find some because. I'm supposed to have four of these screws, and I only have three. So I've probably upgraded this, if anything, by putting an extra screw where it weren't were, weren't wanted, it weren't needed. And I do like this design. Look, all of these screws are basically hidden by that handly doodah at the end. I mean, that's that's actually quite clever. And I suspect if I look at the Nintendo Pro Controller, it's probably the same, and they just pinch the idea. I do have other fittings, so I'm just going to have a quick look at my mystery box of random junk. 
and see if I've got anything that's even remotely that size. Yeah, what do you think, boys and girls? That's right, use a random Torx bit. That will really stuff you in the future. Good luck getting that out without the uh, proper screwdriver for it. Future Dr. A. Or perhaps some sort of future retro archaeologist in the year 2040, when this will be officially become retro. There we go. Nicely done. Oh, oh, OK. Now let's have a look at these screws that are supposed to be going in the handles. We did lose one of those earlier too, and they are normal countersunk screws. So that's going to be even more of a challenge to find a replacement. I hate how this project has forced me to address my messy desk. And the reason is that it's messy is totally legitimate because you're only one wafer thin modification from getting something working. And if you tidy up in between, the chances are you're going to forget what you were doing. I'm going to levitate. Sometimes stuff gets caught underneath. Alas, no, but there was that USB port I was looking for. Hurrah, the detritus collection has produced this screw, which I'm hoping will work with enough brute force to push it into the threads of the original screw. And it does seem to be going, but it also seems to be bending this screwdriver a little bit. Well, I think that's good. I mean, I'm not going to go any further, and it doesn't seem to need to go any further, but I reckon that actually looks better, like a more quality screw. So I might just uh, upgrade the other one. These are like those fancy screw kits you get from Japan, where you're building your own custom controller. These, of course, were taken out of a laptop, so if anything, these are, are a more superior technology. Ah, come on, don't break my screwdriver, like I said. It's the one that came with the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con repair kit, and I do quite like it. <laughs> what? So there we are. I'm uh, pleased to see that it is trying to pair. You can't see the LEDs, but trust me, it is. I can feel that it's much better. It's all a clicking and it's all a doing its thing. I'm not even going to test it, guys. I know. OK, look, let's pretend. OK, hang on. I'm just going to go test it. Whoa, hey, you guys, it worked great. It's fantastic. Super great. Fix it yourself, just great and straight onto Amazon. Get your uh, PS4 analog sticks replacement PS4 Pro controller made in China. Um, I'll try to put a link down below if I can be bothered, and it will work. Thank you for watching.